Um, so configuring frame relay, we're going to go over three options here. Um, you know, configuring frame relay for a single neighbor, for uh, configuring it to use a multi-point interface, and then finally uh, configuring it to use a point-to-point -point interface. The uh, the bottom option is the one I recommend, but we're still going to cover these first two that we you guys are at least familiar with it. Um, so single neighbor configuration. Uh, this is a simple configuration between two routers. It is effectively a point-to-point -point connection with only two peers. So here's our network. We've got a, a router over here, Alabama. Router over here, Alaska. We've got a single. Uh, well, we've got a serial interface on each side with a single uh, PVC built between them. 503 on this end, 305 on the other. Uh, so we just need to set up the configuration for that. So the first thing we want to do is turn on frame relay encapsulation. If you aren't using Cisco equipment on both ends, you're going to need to select the IETF option. Um, so first thing you want to do, do a show IP interface brief, get familiar with what your interfaces are. We can see that we've got our, our LAN interface down here, it's up up. We've got our serial WAN interface up here, it's currently down down, but it does have the IP configured on it already. Um, config T, interface serial 00, encapsulation frame dash relay. And then you can see you've got the IETF option. Um, that's only if you're not using Cisco equipment on both sides. The IETF is the open standard. Since in this example, we are using a Cisco router on both sides, so we only need to specify this frame relay. We don't need that extra identifier at the end. So encapsulation, frame dash relay, enter, you're done. Encapsulation is set to frame relay, frame relay at least on this side of the, uh, the equation. So. Uh, no shut the interface and verify LMI. So we're still in that uh, 000's uh, interface configuration. Do a no shutdown. You can see the interface come up and you can see a line protocol come up. Once you're done with that, do a, uh, a show frame relay LMI. And the main thing you're going to want to look at here is the, uh, the number of sent and received on both ends. This, uh, these two numbers added together should be approximately equal to these two numbers added together. Um, it doesn't have to be exact, but it should be pretty close. The other thing you're going to want to see is um, you, should be, you shouldn't be seeing a whole lot of timeouts. A few timeouts here and there is not a problem. So like out of these 36 we sent, one of those did timeout. That's not an issue to worry about. Just you know, leave it be. But if you're starting to see a lot more timeouts or primarily timeouts, you've probably got some, some larger issue that you need to look at there. Um, and also if you do a, a show frame uh, show frame dash relay PVC it'll show you one the number of PVCs active on your serial interface as well as what their current status is so right now we've got one unused that's listed as inactive um, that's del C 503 also listed here as uh, inactive you see the, the four options are active inactive deleted and static we'll go over those I think it's on the next slide yeah so the, the ISP provides the DELC information in case, uh, so we did not have to configure it uh, directly. So, and in, in I think in some of the other examples, we actually will do the, the direct configuration of the DELC, but in this one, the, the ISP is providing all that information. We get to see what the DELC is, like once we get our interface up and everything, but we don't have to worry about like statically setting a DELC number or anything like that. The ISP is handling all that portion. Um, we should, as I said a second ago, we need to understand the various PVC status types though. So active means uh, it's successfully connected on both sides. Like that DLC, or the, yeah, that, that PVC should um, be completely working at this point. Inactive means it's working correctly on the local router, the one you're configured on, and you're showing that, inter that command on, but the remote router is either not configured or offline. Deleted means uh, you've got a problem on your local router, the one where you issued that command. Uh, most likely, you were attempting to use a DELC that the ISP has not configured. So if you, you know, try to set up a DELC for you know, 999 that the, the ISP did not set up, you're probably going to see this deleted option because it's going to say, well, that's not there. The ISP has that one deleted. And then static, uh, the PVC is statically configured by you instead of the ISP. So. That was, that's pretty much everything we needed to do and verify on one side of our connection. Now we just replicate those, uh, those same changes to the other side of the connection. So first thing you do, show IP and brief on the other router, verify what your connections are. You got your LAN here, it's an up up. You got your WAN serial zero here, it's got the IP configured but it's currently down down. Log into the box, get into config T, interface serial zero, set the encapsulation to frame dash relay. 
uh, no shut the interface and you'll see interface comes up, line protocol comes up and you'll even see that the, the DELSI state has changed to active. So DELSI 305 is now active. Verify LMI on this side as well. Show frame relay uh, LMI and you can see uh, you know these two numbers added together are approximately equal to these two numbers. You're off by one, but again, not a not a big issue. Um, you can see that your Delsi number here, 305, and you can see that it's active, so that's good. Um, verify full functionality with the ping. Uh, so from Alaska, you want to ping the the other routers, uh, WAN IP, 192.168.5.1. You can see that that goes through successfully, so sh everything should be working. Uh, check the frame relay maps, ensure IPs are mapped to the correct, del correct Delsies. So show frame dash relay map, and you can see IP 192.168.5.1 is mapped to Delsi 305. Looks like everything is good, status is up, active. Um, if your router does not support automatic automatically detecting the LMI signaling type, you're, you may need to confirm this type with your ISP and statically configured on each router. So I mentioned this before. Um, most, most new equipment is going to be able to automatically determine the signaling type of LMI you're using, but if not, you need to verify what the ISP has it set as because they're the ones who get to determine it. And then the, the command is under the interface, uh, in this case your serial interface, uh, frame-relay LMI-type, and then it's either going to be Cisco, ANSI, or Q933A. So that's the single neighbor configuration. Um, everything is pretty much done there and working. So that's a that's a really simple scenario because you just got uh, one on two, one on each side. Multipoint interface configuration uh, kind of adds on to what we just did, but puts another router in the mix. So you've got a, a second uh, PVC Delsi going to uh, this this main hub router. So in this design, we built upon the last network by adding an additional site and PVC. Uh, this makes it a hub and spoke design. In this design, all sites also use the 192.168.5.0 slash 24 uh, block for their WAN subnets. So because of that, they effectively believe they are all connected to a shared medium like Ethernet. Um, a multipoint interface can be configured on the physical interface or with sub-interfaces. Um, in this example, we're going to be doing um, everything on the physical interface. But again, the, the last example we do here, we'll, we'll be doing sub-interfaces, which I would highly, highly recommend. Um, just it's a better solution overall. If configuring sub-interfaces, all configurations can be removed from the physical interface except for encapsulation frame dash relay. So you're not going to set your encapsulation on each of your sub-interfaces um, if you're configuring sub-interfaces, but you on your physical interface, it has to have encapsulation frame dash relay to work. Uh, we won't be using sub-interfaces in this example, but if we did, this is basically what it would look like down here. So, you know, config T jumps you into config mode, and then interface serial zero dot, and then you've got all these options for this crazy high number of uh, logical interfaces that you could possibly set up there. In this case, it looks like they chose uh, sub-interface uh, dot 10. So interface serial zero dot 10 space, and then your, your option is going to be multi-point. And then after that, you can see that it jumps you into sub-interface configuration mode. So again, this example, we're not actually configuring sub-interfaces. This is just kind of a quick aside to show you how those are set up. Um, it's also kind of a good idea whenever you set these up, or just a good practice to make the sub-interfaces match the, um, the Delsi numbers. Uh, that way, it's, it doesn't have to. It's not like it's not going to work. Uh, if you don't set them to the Delsi numbers, it just makes it a lot easier to keep track of which sub-interface goes to which Delsi, that kind of thing, if you're doing some more extensive troubleshooting for a problem later.